This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble, and it goes from now until uh, the, yeah, it goes from now until midnight here on the east coast of the United States. Few problems getting started tonight, but I think we're finally up and running. Oh man, oh man. I don't know. For some reason, my computer decided to shut itself down. <laughs> in the middle of the opening of the show. Fuck you, Microsoft. It is their fault. It is their problem. Oh, man, oh, man. Well, let's get let's get on with the show and uh, do something here. Let's see. What should we do? Okay, let's make a call out to Las Wages, Nevada. Here we go. Wait a minute. Uh, here we go. da 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 Come on, start ringing already. There we go. I got nothing funny to open with today because I've been sick as a dog all week. Let's get this over with. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, boy. Oh, man. I caught, I caught this fucking thing on Friday. It was horrible. So it was, uh, what do you call it? My doctor said it was an upper respiratory something so oh god i thought i was getting the flu that's you know, i had a flu shot but that, I, i'm getting better now that's stephen pearl thank you my what? muscles don't hate no more my is hating like a hooker now wait a minute hold on a second I've become, we, we got I've, bec- I've become the old jewish guy in pain complaining dr bennett is in okay my uh, my calcium is full is, is my sugar. So we have to figure out whether this is a is a uh, 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 cold or it is a flu. All right. Oh, I've had it looked at already. I had it looked at yesterday, so I know what it is. Oh. it's not a flu. You know, and I did have a flu shot in September, although that doesn't really mean anything. And it's not a cold because it's been kicking my ass for longer than a cold does. Uh, it's a it's an upper respiratory infection. Oh, that's and, a good uh, it's, one. It's, it's the old flu. You get the muscles hurt and the fucking you, you can't stand up without wanting to fall on the floor and you know you can't taste the smell. It's just well, it's a load of fun. You hit the jackpot. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't get you didn't, the, hey, I but the, the one on bed. I got three tombstones. The good news is the flu shot worked, right? The flu shot work. It's not the flu. And my doctor says, don't worry. Just get through it. You'll be okay. So what, what did you... She's Japanese, but she talks like that anyway. Did he give you anything for it or her or whatever? Yeah, she gave me, she gave me some pills for it. I was on the, ups, the upswing when I saw her yesterday. But from Friday till the day before, holy crap. Oh, man. I, just, I went 20 rounds with Tyson. I did, it just kicked my ass. It fucked me up bad. Because you're just sweating and then you're cold and you're hot. You feel like you were drunk from heroin and your muscles are killing you and everything. Oh, God damn. Well, what would you prefer? A flu or a cold? A cold? I don't mean. I would prefer the flu because at least oh, with, the a... fl- with the flu, there isn't a lot of snot coming out of you and all that stuff. You aren't, <laughs> you aren't dripping. There is a pearl flu. Holy crap! The other one the, the, with the flu, the flu, the flu right all, all you can do to get over the flu is just sleep, and that to me, that's heaven. You know. Well, here's the best part: since Friday till uh, not, I slept the last night, but from Friday till the night before, I slept about five minutes. It was like coming down off like the worst speed you ever had. I couldn't sleep. I was like, if I can just get to sleep. It'll be cool. Even if I never wake up again, it'll be cool. Well, the only, get to sleep. The only problem with I my, sleep. Yeah. The only problem with my theory is is that the flu can kill you, but a cold won't. A know? cold won't kill you. A cold is a pain. A cold is some guy just tapping on, on the shoulder. Hey, hey, guess what? Hey, 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 guess what? Guess what? Not going away. Yeah. And if you want to kill the guy, you get through it. The flu is just, you know, getting mugged. <laughs> Three guys in an alley with boxing gloves and hammers and lead pipes. And, okay, we're going to really fuck you up now. Uh, no, uh, you, you know what? i got to tell you, uh, and, and this is absolute truth. You've got a guy like Howie Mandel, who is a well-known germaphobe, mm-hmm. all right? But he may not, be, he may not be wrong 
because the way you catch a cold, for instance, is shaking hands. It's not oh, if somebody if somebody's got that. a cold and they sneeze, you're probably not going to get it. But if you shake hands with uh-huh. them, you will. Because oh, brother, that, I shake hands with the world, <laughs> especially if I go to a club. I'm meeting everybody, especially when it, in Vegas. When it's cold, shake a lot of hands. When it's cold season, carry Purell around yep. with you. You know, yeah. Uh, a lot of people here would get sick a couple of months ago, and I I dodged it, and all of a sudden, bam! I was saving you for last, bro. Well, you know, so you, you know how you get a cold. You know, you know how it happens. You you hand, shake hands with somebody who's been, of course, blowing his mm-hmm. nose all day, so he's got the germs oh, on his hands. He's scratching their ass and picking their ears. And, <laughs> and now you haven't got it yet because uh, it's just on your hands. But then you do something yeah. like scratch your nose or touch your face yep. or the rim of your nose. <laughs> and then, it's all then over, man. wait a minute, and listen to this. The germ then crawls into your nose, all right? And goes mm-hmm. into the mucous membrane, and the minute it hits the mucous membrane, game cl- game set and match, right? You know, you've got oh, you've boy, got a yeah, cold. Man. So here's what you do. I <laughs> I found they came out with this stuff years ago called coldies, and uh, I know you probably figure, oh, it's just another one of those little things, you know? They They're say, like fizzies, except they yeah, got no. open them. Coldies work, and here's the reason they work. They're really coldies. Here's what they found. The way you can stop a cold once you've got it, the way you can minimize it, or if you know you are have a chance of getting the cold, the way you can prevent it is by the infusion of zinc. Here's what zinc does. My pal zinc. Zinc, yeah, it sounds like a Disney educational Your film. Zinc, a crown education. This is zinc. Yeah. Yeah. So, but what happens is is that uh, the um, uh, zinc prevents the cold germ from adhering to the membrane. Ah. So, if you have a delivery system, but the trouble is, zinc tastes horrible. All right. Uh. So, what they did is they created a delivery system that you could at least put up with, and while it doesn't taste great. Coldies oh. does, and I've done it. I've made a cold go away in two days with with coldies. Wow, I see. Yeah, so. I was wondering why the Paul Newman zinc dressing never sold that well. But the zinc dressing know. never sold that well because people weren't yeah. aware it would prevent them from getting a cold. <laughs> exactly. <There you> go. <laughs> Paul's just trying to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gee, he's how long? Well, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be coughing my 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 guts out on this one, but uh, here we go. Yeah, but you sound you, you don't sound sick. You you know you're peppy and sick. Oh zippy. no, I feel a oh, lot. I thought I was you know <laughs> I thought if I was going to get to sleep in the last few days, I may not wake up, but that's okay. At least I got to sleep. But I'm, I'm on the upswing. I'm strong like bull. Um, uh, so, yeah. I'm still kicking, still kicking. Yeah, um, um, I'm trying to remember who who they said this about, but it was somebody like. Uh, Oh, I don't know, uh, Gary Cooper, somebody like that. I can't remember who sent this back, but somebody wrote him a telegram, how old Gary Cooper, and he wrote back, Mm -hmm. old Gary Cooper, fine. Uh, And uh, I uh, I, I don't think it was Gary Cooper. It was somebody else, but anyway. uh, Gary Cooper, yep. Okay, you want to write me, I'll write you. So, so, you know, the question is, uh, how are you feeling? Outside of that, uh, how, oh, how, 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 how? I was pissed because I was in the same battle. Well, I was going to you know, go out and frolic, but uh, yeah. I was supposed to open for Carl on Saturday when I, I got sick on Friday and I couldn't do it. So yeah. I'm doing it again this week. But uh, man, I, just, I was disappointed. Yeah, well, so I, know, but, uh, uh, so I was going to ask how old uh, uh, Stephen Pearl, and of course you would reply, Stephen Pearl uh, is okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, fine. Uh, uh, no, but how, how how old are you now? Oh, I'm as old as my tongue and a little bit older than my teeth. <laughs> Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Uh, Sixty three. Sixty three. I never thought I'd say that. You know, it's all these. I never thought it, I'd get that far. It's all these kids that I that I uh, you know mentored and hung out with and whatever. Turns out they're sixty three. They're old farts. They're all fought. Some of them are dead. You know, just old, 
old timey guys now. Yeah, sitting well, on the porch, go, get off my lawn, be bad, you punks. Well, well I've been saying, fancy pants, gangster. I've been saying this lately because I had another friend die. Okay, and I go, geez, Almighty, you know, is it never going to end? And the answer is, as long as I'm alive, it's going to get worse. Exactly. You know, exactly. It's going to get worse, and then one day your, your name's on the list. Oh, gotta go. So the I good up, the, a couple of weeks ago, I, I looked up two old high school friends I hadn't spoken to in a while. And I looked them up on the internet, and I found both their obituaries. So, okay, time is marching on. Yeah, yeah. And and after a while, you begin to go, well, the reason so many of the people I know are dying is because I'm not. You know? There you go. <laughs> They're for the grace of God. Look, I exactly. Get to see another one, you know? Exactly. So, you know. Yeah, it's all right. You know, I mean, I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm happy I'm still alive, although... You know, I've always been such a pessimist that I really don't feel I'm living my life to the fullest. Well, there's always skydiving and dolphin riding, and I've always wanted to do both of those, but I know I never will. Dolphin riding? I never heard of dolphin riding. No, I just ride, you ride a dolphin. Oh, yeah, sure. The only person I ever knew just, yeah. that, that, you know, rode dolphins was Aquaman, you know. Aquaman could do it, and I think if you pretend you're drowning where dolphins are, one of them will give you a lift to shore. They're that smart. Well, there were two competing underwater guys, weren't there? There was one over at Marvel, and there was one at DC, <laughs> right? There was Aquaman. There was always, there was always like a, for, the, for every for every uh, DC hero, there was an opposing Marvel hero. Well, you know, you know what really got me the other day is they doing a movie of Captain Marvel with a female. That's what okay. they tell me. I've heard but, about that. All right. But but that's not the Captain Marvel you and I knew. What happened no, was... No, the Shazam guy. Well, yeah, well Marvel, it's a whole, I, I got this story from my friend Shecky who knows all about comics. Marvel came out with Captain Marvel, even though there yeah. was already a Captain Marvel, because what you now folks call Shazam was Captain Marvel. Uh-huh. And that was, uh, it wasn't even DC Comics. It was, I'm trying to remember the comic company, the Fawcett, I think, or somebody like that. I remember Fawcett, yeah, sure. Yeah, and and they had Captain Marvel, who I remember, Billy Batson, this kid, uh, when he says Shazam becomes Captain Marvel. That's right, All yeah. right. Uh, and, <laughs> and what happened was is that DC eventually sued... Fawcett, I guess it was Fawcett, um, because they said that Captain Marvel was too close to Superman. And he really was, you know. I mean, he was kind of the, uh, I don't know, the low-rent low Superman, maybe? It was the best way to describe uh, Yeah, yeah, like the Superman from the 99 cent store. Although, as a kid, I liked Captain Marvel because it was a kid like me who every time he said Shazam became Captain Marvel, and I could relate to that, yeah. you know. But I couldn't yeah. relate to a guy who came from Krypton and had to dress <laughs> down in order to, you know, not be recognized. Yeah, yeah. In fact, <laughs> the distinction between Superman and any other superhero is that all sup- most all the other superheroes either were normal people who like you know like Batman who did a lot of exercises and then could do what he did, or yeah. they had to go through a metamorphosis of some sort to become the superhero. Whereas Superman oh, yeah. was always Superman, and what he had to do in order to get along in this world was dressed down exactly pretend he was a nobody so even though he's clark kent he's still superman see yeah whereas in the case of billy batson he wasn't anything until uh he said shazam which stood for like the wisdom of solomon the strength of hercules the something of Apollo, the something of Zeus. That's that's where Shazam comes from. There was a whole like yeah, list. Ah, I get it. I yeah. get it. Ah, yeah. There's a nice history lesson right there. Yeah, but anyway, so so DC sued and got the rights to to uh, uh, Captain Marvel, who they then uh, changed to Shazam. You know. Uh-huh. And so now Marvel comes out with a Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel movie. I never read a lot of them. And I'm going, is that the Captain Marvel I know? This is not the Captain Marvel I know. This is Marvel no, Comics Captain Marvel. Movie Captain Marvel. Yeah. 
I don't know if any of this is interesting you. Uh, a little bit of it, but uh, I was like, Superman was lucky that people on Krypton looked like Earthlings. Because if he came down and he had like a, a green head and antennas and one eye in the center of his head, and then he still tried to fit in his Clark camp, I think they would have guessed who he was. Well, I always kind of liked the Superman story. You know, it was just a good, solid yeah. story of how he sure. came to be and what he was, <clears throat> and you know. Yep. And uh, no, it was a great story, and the kids, the kids could enjoy it, adults could enjoy it. You know, the, I used to love the comics when I was a kid, the Twelve Centers. Yeah, those are amazing. Yeah. Yeah, but then I'll tell you. Couldn't about, wait, couldn't wait. Every month they come. Who, the comic would come out. who was your they favorite? Who was your favorite as you were growing up? Uh, as I was growing up, I liked uh, I, I liked Archie because it was funny. But of course, I liked all the DC stuff. And then all of a sudden, about sixty six or so, all my friends started like turning to Marvel comics. We don't like DC anymore. We like Marvel comics. So I started reading Marvel comics, but I still kept reading DC and Superman. Yeah. I didn't want to tell anybody. When I was growing but, uh, up, I mean, I liked Superman. Who couldn't like Superman? I mean, come on. <laughs> He's fucking, you know. Well, the, the thing I liked about Marvel comics is, uh, over DC was Superman and Batman took place in mythical places, Metropolis and Gotham City. Spider-Man took, that place. took place in New York City. Yeah. And sometimes you see him swinging by a building that I recognize. There was one comic where I think he was in Far Rockaway because he's swinging by this thing that looks just like my grandmother's house. Yeah, well, I, I, Spider-Man in Far Rockaway. I bought Ashley once. Actually, didn't all the Marvel comics take place in New York? Most of them? Yeah, it was all New York. Yeah, there was all. I think, it, it was like I think it was, with, uh, uh, with Spider-Man. I don't know where Fantastic Four took place. Maybe... I don't know, but I remember Spider-Man was specifically in New York City. Well, a Superman... I thought it was cool, but it's a real place, and I can relate, because this is a real place, and I yeah. live here. So yeah, but... I so, might see Spider-Man swing by one night. I could wave to him or something. Superman was Metropolis, and then Batman was uh, Yeah, that's, that's Gotham. make-believe, yeah. That's like, uh, it's fun. It's make-believe, though. But then you get into... More, the Marvels were grittier, oh, I thought. And oh, I really just like, just like the way I, they were drawn. I, and the, the, just the, yeah. I always thought of Gotham, though, as New York, because Gotham was always the other name for New York that people use. They always oh, just sure. refer to it as Gotham. The Metropolis, of course. Yeah. It was like it was like a generic New York. And yeah. Spider Man. It was New York, man. You know, you might see him go by the Fillmore East or something. You I, never I know. think I liked I think I liked Batman over Superman when push came to shove. Because it was darker. Well it, 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 in the old days it wasn't particularly dark. It was kind of like really comic booky. I, I remember mm -hmm. a cover of Batman, you know running over the top of a huge giant typewriter, you know, things like, or, or <laughs> yeah, typewriter. And, and you know, it, it had that, that, that feel to it. Of, but it wasn't until they came up with the Dark Knight concept that they, they suddenly made it very dark and made the whole history yeah, of Batman yeah, very dark. dark. And it's remained dark yeah. ever since. That's the one that they like portraying. That's the one you've got on Gotham, the TV show, which I love. And um, that's the way they've done the movies lately. But if you go back to the Tim Burton Batman, that was more the cartoony oh, yeah. Batman. You know, that yeah, wasn't the yeah. Dark Knight concept. Yeah, I, I stopped following the comics by the time it was the Dark Knight shit and everything. But now you liked you know, Archie, like eleven, twelve. You like liked that. you liked Archie. Yeah, I liked Archie. I Until could, he formed this band, the Archies. He goes, oh, these guys suck, man. I'm not going to read Archie anymore. You know, no, I like Archie. I like Jughead and Doug, Douglas Hamburgers. Now, have you seen the latest incarnation of that on a TV no, show? No, I, I, did, I didn't even hear about it until, uh, what's his name, just died. Luke Perry died because yeah. he was on the show. I watch but it. No, I, never, I didn't know that. Maybe I never knew there was an Archie show on. I watch but it. It's it, not the Archie I remember. No, this is the, this is the dark Archie. Okay. Dark Archie. <laughs> it doesn't even have the checkers in his head, man. He just no, well, the, the thing Archie is, no the love. thing is that uh, you probably got too old for this, but they did reimagine Archie in the comic books as being much darker, much more not looking comic booky <clears throat> like he looked before. Uh, and so this wow. uh, this TV version of Riverdale is the dark version of Archie, and and. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, they're all very believable. I mean, Jughead is believable, and, uh, you know, uh -huh. uh, you know uh, in, in the, in the, they killed off Mrs. Grundy. Uh, That's about time she was 198. Well, no, in this one, Mrs. Grundy was a hot 30-year-old. 
Oh and, my! They changed everything, man. And and I believe in it. She had sex with Archie. So. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing in the Archie? I knew Mrs. Grundy and Mrs. Grundy. I knew was like an old lady. Was it was Jughead dressed up as an old lady with the same face? And they and they don't really they hair don't. in the bun. And, <laughs> and you know, uh, Veronica and and uh, uh, what's her name? Betty and, and Veronica Betty. were always arch enemies, you know, because they were all hot after yeah, Archie. They, right? they, wanted, they wanted Archie. Yeah, and and in this one, they're actually friends, you know, and both of them at one time or another yeah. went with Archie. Uh, and right now, yeah. and right now, he's going with Josie of Josie and the Pussycats. Is this destroying your youth? <laughs> what I'm it's telling just, oh, you. I just blown it up at the bits. I just let crumble like it. <laughs> well, I hated Archie. Oh, what have they done to the Archie? I love. I mean, we're, there's crack houses in Riverdale now. I hated. Like gang well, I now. hated Archie comics, and when I heard they were going to do Archie and you know do Riverdale, I went. I I can't watch that. And then I watched one episode, and I said, now they're doing it right. You know, now this yeah. is the way it should be. <laughs> Dark Archie. You know, real hot. Uh, well, which which Betty or Veronica? Which one were you hot for? Oh, they were the same girl, but one was blonde and one had black hair. I like Betty. I always like Betty better. Really? Oh, Veronica was rich. You oh. know, Veronica had the dough, and you know you would have had a good life if you married her, except for her nagging. But Betty, Betty would have gone to Betty would have killed for you though. So I like yeah, Betty's but, personality better. But I like Veronica because I think that she was accessible. I could have her. <laughs> you know. Uh, the, well, nobody can have her because she's a cartoon. So, yeah, you know, like yeah, fucking Jessica yeah, Rabbit. You can't yeah, do it. Yeah, but you know, well, it, 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 it's fine. Find a real girl named Veronica. There are plenty of them. <laughs> I married one. I married one. I married one. My my second wife was go. was Ronnie Veronica. Oh, Ronnie. there you go. You were with a Veronica. You had a, Ver you had a Veronica. Veronica. I don't think I've ever known a girl named Veronica. Well, I married one. So there. Oh, there you go. Right of course, Veronica. of course, we we never called her. Ver we never Maybe called her in. Veronica. We called her Ronnie. Okay, Ronnie. Yes, and that's what they call her on uh, Riverdale. They call her Ronnie. Yeah, Ronnie for short. I guess even the same amount of letters. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. And and Jug I don't know this new Riverdale. And Jughead is a uh, is a writer, and he kind of narrates the uh, whole thing. You know. And does he wear the crown? Is he no, no, no. Because I remember the joke. No, no, no. He wears a oh, cap. What, he no, wears... what are they doing? What are they doing? He... They're fucking everything up. And it screws up all it, my it, language. It, well, he wears he a hat. He alone. He wears a hat, but the hat he wears kind of looks like the crown thing, but it's not, you know? Um they, they did they did do an opening on this show once, which was like a dream sequence. In which all uh -huh. the characters were as they were in those original comic books. I mean, Art, uh, as Jug, they Jug, should be. Jughead walks in wearing that crown, you know. And, and <laughs> that whirring sound you hear was Bob Montana spinning in his grave. But now we lost Archie's father because uh, the actor died. Well, uh, they got to find a new Archie's father. Archie's going to be a one-parent kid. So yeah, and that's terrible. You never know what's going to happen in the wacky world of Hollywood. The CTV role gets a stroke. <laughs> anyway, so, so um, uh, what else is new in the wonderful life of uh, since we Nothing, spent most of this I'm time just talking about to die? You know? <laughs> some people go to Miami. Some people come out here. I'm doing shows, and one day uh, I uh, just won't wake up anymore. But right now, I'm having fun. Well, people say it's, it's crappy out right now. I'm staying in with the cats. Nina's still in California. And I got nothing to do today, except so hopefully you have a couple by the weekend. Well, what I'm sick about life is I used to have stuff to look forward to. And now the only thing I have to look forward to is death. <laughs> you know? There you go. <laughs> I got a couple of shows and then death. That's what I'm looking forward to this weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, do you want to die on stage? Would you like that? Would you like what happened to uh, what's his Whatever name? happens to Dick me, Sean. I would love to be dead before I hit the ground, like Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby had the best death ever. Unless you go in your sleep, you just you're golfing. You're golfing, man. You're having fun with him. But boop, and he, he finished the game. He goes, "It was a great game." And then boop, he's dead. Yeah, it was a massive heart that's, attack. That's it just to, it just felled him. That's, it, that's, yeah. they probably just, he probably just was going through the tunnel before he started falling yeah, but then, over. Then you have the Luke Perry. The game. But, but then you have the I Luke Perry. The battle of the baseball bat. The, then you have, have the Luke Perry uh, 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 factor in which he didn't. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well.
Uh, so um, that's our interview. It was almost over with anyway, but I accidentally pushed something here and it stopped it. I mean, I could start the interview okay, over let's again, make a call. but I'm not going to do that. So anyway, where are we? Everything is so fucked up tonight. I don't even, I, 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 I don't have the will to go on to tell you the damn truth. No, I touched something here and it fucked up. And, and now I've got to start my Skype. Let's hope it works. Oh, there it is. Thank goodness. Oh, my God. Something, well, we don't know yet. Something works. And it's the one thing you don't expect to work, and that's Skype. Anyway, I, I've been having all kinds of problems tonight. Uh, as I was signing out, I don't know what it is. I touched something or something. I don't know what it was, but all of a sudden it says your computer is shutting down. This was when I started the Pearl interview. And it said your, uh, your, your uh, um, uh, uh, computer is shutting down. So then I said, it said, be sure to turn off OBS or whatever. Anyway, I didn't let it do that, and it went back to its main screen. But in the meantime, everything else had stopped. Everything had stopped. And I had to like restart it all over again. And uh, then I had to start the show over again. So you people who are gonna watch the, uh, the version of the live program on YouTube, you're gonna see the starting and the stopping and the, all the kind of things like that. And that's what that was all about. But finally we, we got on. And then at the very end of this interview, I s hit something on my, uh, on my uh, uh, what do you call it, on my, uh, on my keyboard, and all of a sudden, we lost the end of the Pearl uh, interview. But it was only about a minute to go, so. Hello, Tom Yamaguchi. Hello, uh, uh, Charlie. Anybody want to wind up doing this show for me tonight? I'm exhausted. <laughs> no, it, it's just I've had so many technical uh, problems in the last, uh, in the last, uh, like, I guess we could say uh, week. Uh, I don't know, and, and and today it was just one technical fire after another that I had to keep putting out, and I'm I'm exhausted. I'm just absolutely exhausted. And um, on top of that, uh, Damien couldn't do his show tonight because he has some kind of intruder on the property where he works, and he had to, he had to take care of that. And then uh, let's see here, what else uh, was uh, was happening? Uh, so that, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, uh, he didn't do a show, so then I had to take his show off the on-demand list, and I had, to, you know, it's one thing after another. It's just a clusterfuck tonight. Uh, and, and then when I tried to get on, it just everything went wrong, and I was so, I'm so flummoxed these days and so exhausted from all that. I had all my audio go out today here. And I couldn't figure out how to fix it, and all of a sudden it fixed itself. I mean, I'm I'm just you know, uh, I just putting out one technical fire after another, and that's that's my whole life now, and I can't stand it any longer. So, well, you had to balance my day. It was such a wonderful day for me. Was it really? Yeah. What was wonderful about it? Tell me something. Just gorgeous right weather. Eighty degrees. Not a cloud in the sky. You know, about 20% humidity. I mean, it was just beautiful. Just beautiful. Yeah, well, I didn't even go out at all, and then we had the, we had a sunny day here, but we didn't have the we didn't have the heat. We didn't have the uh, uh, heat, so, you know, what the hell. Uh, but anyway, so how are you, Tom? I haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah, uh, well, we, I'm doing all right. Uh, we started out uh, with rain day, but it was sunny by the end of the by the time the afternoon came by, by yeah. so it was it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, one thing I was to mention. Oh, uh, hello, hello to Jeff. You're in uh, in Florida, right now. I'm in Georgia today. G Georgia today. Ah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, what were you what were you saying, Tom? Yeah. What, what were you going to say, Tom? Oh, I say I I told my Bob Montana story before. Yeah. Um, because, you know, when Stephen Pearl said about Bob Montana turning over his grave, mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think I think Bob Montana would be very, very pleased with what's all going on with Archie. 
and the story that I've told you before is I had a friend whose uh, father was a cartoonist. Wait a minute, who was, Bob, who was, who was Bob Montana? The drew Archie. Who, oh, he drew Archie. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, Bob okay. Montana drew Archie. And um, so I have a friend whose father was a co was a, a, did a comic strip called Marmaduke. Mm -hmm. And yes, I know uh, Marmaduke. so he used to go all these comic conventions with him. And so one time, yeah. he goes and he meets Bob Montana. And Montana somehow says to him, you know, my wife and I a number of years ago are wondering, what's this with all these kids smoking pot? So we decided that we were going to try it, and we tried it, and we liked it, and we've been smoking it ever since. <laughs> true, true story. Wow. Wow. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm sorry you didn't get to hear the end of, of Pearl's interview, but it was something like, see you next time. So, I mean, you know, but but for some reason, I pushed something, and it was not the thing I should have pushed, and boom. You know, yeah. it, it, crazy. Oh, here comes Vernon Nunn. Ah, yes, there's his, right. and his little dog. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, there he is. Here he comes. He should pop in any minute now. He's his his um, um, what do you call it? His uh, connection is a little slow. There we go, and he's lying there, looking very very comfortable. Uh, hello there, Vernon. Yeah. Howdy. Howdy. And, of course, we had, we didn't say hello to uh, Josh Wheeler, who's right over there, folks. You can see him. Uh, hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Fine. Fine. Um, uh, you know, tonight's a feel-free night, so everybody enjoy yourselves. Um, you know, there's nobody here to give us a bad time about the fact that we're, we have a president who's literally going off the rails. I mean, I mean, this is, we thought he was bad before. You know, I said last night that he is acting like, and I know he doesn't drink. That I know, yeah. okay? But he's acting like a drunk. Yeah. You know, all these tweets are crazy. I mean, how, uh, it, okay, so he does a tweet about John McCain. Okay, now let it lie. <laughs> but no, he has to compound it and compound it and compound it. And now Republican senators are getting a little miffed by this whole deal. You know, because <laughs> well, they like John McCain. You know, even if they were Democrats and he was a Republican, they liked him. You know, he was one of the most well-liked guys in the Senate. And so yeah. when you go after him, you're just, you know, you're losing it, pal. Yeah, you know, uh, I think maybe it's time for him to have a little shrink come in and give him a, an exam, because <laughs> I I think he's a he's a dangerous man right now because he's not well. Am I over saying? Am I overstating uh, this? No, not at all. I mean, the danger that we've always had is 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 try is trying to normalize him. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we, you know, when you say, well, let's not, you know, let's just, just, you know, that's just, just him, let's ignore him, you know, and that's, it's actually, this is what happens when, when, when you try to pretend that everything is okay. Yeah. It's not okay. We are really in deep stuff. <laughs> yeah. We're in deep shit. Yeah. No, there's no question about it. Uh, and, and I, you know, when he became president, everybody was going, oh, woe is me. This, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. And I went. Cool it, you know. How much can one man destroy this country? <laughs> well, that was the misunderstatement of my lifetime. <laughs> because I mean, if if anybody, you know, I often joke about the fact that he's a businessman, and what I think he's trying to do is burn down the country and then get the insurance money. You know, uh, and and uh, uh, if I didn't know better, I think that's what he was doing. He does everything he can to fuck everything up. I don't, I don't know what what's going through his little mind. So, you know, I I I, uh, is it, uh, I so I'm not I'm not overly sick about this. Okay. Uh, yes, Tom. Well, there's one theory that that 
that the reason why he's going off on all these things like John McCain, all that, is he's trying to divert attention from other things like the the Mueller investigation and the uh, the, the uh, white supremacist shooting in in, the, in uh, New Zealand. And maybe that's possible, but I just think I think he's just not even thinking. He's just he's just so impulsive. Yeah, that he doesn't give any thought as to he just uh, latches on to something. And he just doesn't let go, or he's just all over the map, and you know that's him. You know, <laughs> that's him. Well, you know, it's easy to say. You know, that we say that's him, but it, it's getting it's getting scary. You know, no, I, I I I didn't try. I wasn't trying to minimize it. I'm just saying that to say that he that he's got you know the the, the, the three dimensional chess thing. Um, I don't think that's happening. I think he's just whacked out. He can't even do one dimensional chess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I think he's 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 not well, uh, and and uh, I think the Repu- some a lot of the Republicans are starting to worry about him. Uh, but what's his name uh, from Utah um, who ran for president? Uh, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney. He's been saying that he's a little disturbed by this, but he hasn't really been saying it. He's been kind of parsing it. You know, and he really of all the people there who should come out against Trump, it should be him. You know, I mean, Trump wasn't too terribly kind to him when he was running for office. He had terrible things to say about him. Uh, And and all of a sudden, Mitt Romney is kind of like parsing his words and going, well, you know, uh, maybe he'll get better. And, you know, we should fuck you, Mitt. You know, we need more Republicans to finally say we're fed up with this. You know, and unless you straighten up and fly right, we're not going to vote for your shit. Well, that's my problem with Mitt Romney was it's like, do you expect me to respect a guy like that, even though he seems like a decent human being and a respectable person? But I've lost all for him because we've talked about this many times. If you just remove Donald Trump from the equation... And the same exact words that came out of his mouth would have come out of Barack Obama's mouth. Mitt Romney would be on Meet the Press, George Stephanopoulos, uh, you know, Hardball. He, he would be on every television program that he could possibly, you know, whore himself out to. And, and they would be coining the phrase, you know, King Obama, the dictator, you know, he, he's gone, you know, the mad king. I mean, am I not... Correct? Oh, absolutely. Or do I just see it differently? Absolutely. There's no question. Uh, and, and the fact, but the fact is, you know what's kind of interesting? Barack Obama has been very quiet about all of this. He's been very presidential in not commenting on a former president's actions. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, and that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, pre- am I right, uh, um, uh uh, 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 Josh, that that you're not it, presidents are not supposed to speak ill of the newer presidents, right? It's not typical, right? Yeah. yeah. So he's been very good, but I bet he sits at home going, "I really want to say something. I really want to say something." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I would like to eat dinner, uh, or attend, or just I guess sit off to the side of the private TV dinners that they eat at their little table with Bill and Hillary. I mean, would that not be as they sit there and watch the evening news and eat their little, you know. Well, if I were Hillary. <laughs> chicken she made in the oven. If I were, if I were, yeah, like the dinner she, yeah, she made me in the oven, sure. Uh, uh, she couldn't even bake an election, okay? So anyway, uh, 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 I think that she's got to feel terrible. And the reason she's got to feel terrible is because she has to sit there and watch this shit going on and saying, I lost to that? You know? I mean, now, of course, we're going to say she, he didn't lose. She didn't lose. Today, he went, I got 68 million, uh, 67 million votes. And I said, I yelled at my TV, said, yeah, yeah. And Hillary got 70. You know, I mean, so, so what if you got 68, 67 million or whatever asshole number you come up with? Doesn't matter. Ain't doesn't mean shit to a tree. Yeah. 
You know, uh, and you 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 have uh, literally screwed up, my friend. You know, uh, it, it is yeah, just, I just. But no. I just hate the. I mean, I know it's an overplayed word and everything, but it, it's true. I just hate the hypocrisy from some of the Republican Party. I mean, if if there could possibly be a modern day Benedict Arnold, uh, Lindsey Graham would leap from the chair to play yeah. that fucking part. I mean, there's yeah. you know, I mean, it's just like, oh, you mean there's another side I can join? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just I don't understand. I mean, I well, did you hear? I did John you, McCain was a friend of his, but what, apparently he wasn't that good of a friend. No, but was it Lindsey Graham today who had something to say about saying, "Well, this is not one of Donald Trump's finest hours." I think oh, is how well, he put uh, it. That's you know, yeah. that's like saying you got drunk and called someone on the phone uh, and, and said uh, something uh, you should yeah, say. Yeah, I but mean, then <laughs> then he completed that. He completed that. You know, he was pretty much saying, hey, this is not good. But then he um, uh, came back and uh, said, uh, but I'm going to support him and everything he needs. Yeah. Well, y- you know, I mean, did you have to say that? Right. Why did you just do that? You know, yeah. you, you didn't. Mm-hmm. You could have just rebuked him and said, "Listen, I, you know, he's speaking ill of of a friend of mine, of a man. In fact, I think Lindsey Graham and John McCain were very close to each other." Yeah, that was what I always understood was they spent quite a lot of time together. But I mean, apparently, it didn't mean enough to Lindsey Graham to keep him from you know selling his soul to the fucking devil because it didn't take him. 15 minutes after John McCain died and he, you know, and he turned into a totally new person. So, you know, I mean, that's just what I've seen. I mean, I think ever since uh, McCain passed away, Lindsey Graham has, you know, started the quick turn to, he, he pretty much supports anything Donald Trump says. I mean, you know, Donald Trump could come out and say, I'd like to bomb San Francisco. And Lindsey Graham would be like, hey, you know, we've got to do what we got to do. You know, it, well, why are they doing this, though? That's the question. I and, 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 and I and, have no answer. Well, that. my my only answer to that is they're afraid of the power of Donald Trump, that he has enough of a base that they don't want to screw up that base yeah. that he has. And I think they're underestim- they're overestimating the base. Yeah. Because I think that the way things are going now, especially this latest McCain tirade, even the diehard Trump people, yeah, not necessarily they can't they can't really excuse that, you know. I mean, I, in ways, I in many ways, I wish Phil was here tonight to excuse that for us. I'd like to hear his excuse for that. There is no excuse for what he did. Yes, Tom. Well, I've got a little part of the explanation. I'm still getting uh, Republican emails, uh, fundraising emails, because in 2012 I registered to vote uh, Republican for the presidential primary. Ah, well, you're one of but those, I, huh? <laughs> you're one of those, huh? Yeah, I yeah. did. I, yeah. I voted for uh, Fred Carger. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, this latest uh, email I got from Lindsey Graham says, the United States uh, Senate voted against President Trump's national emergency to build a wall and protect our border. I stood with the president and supported his declaration, but I would like to know your opinion. Do you support President Trump's natural uh, national emergency? And then I'm probably, if I respond, I said, there is no national emergency, so it can't be answered yes or no. So basically what they're doing is they're using, you know, they're raising money on it. I mean, they, they as long as they can continue to raise money off this, you know, this cult of Trump. And I've said it before, we don't have a Republican Party anymore. What we have is the party of Trump, P-O-T. That's what it is. And all these people have sold out, including Lindsey Graham and... and uh, I, don't, I don't know that know, I agree with you that it's the party, party of... all sold out. I don't know that, uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the party of Trump. But it's the party of something. It's the party of expediency. Uh, it, because if Trump weren't president and it was another guy, they'd be, you know, and he was a Republican, they'd be saying how wonderful he was. Well, he certainly, it's not a, it's not a conservative party anymore if they follow Trump. Well, I mean, he's a protectionist. Well, I think, I, think, though, I think this is the problem, though, with both parties, okay, is that they root for the home team and they, they don't 
sometimes become critical of their own home team when somebody on the home team does something wrong. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, for instance, one of the things that I guess you remember over at Sirius with me and, uh, and um, uh, uh, Obama is that I was critical of Obama, you know? Uh, well, you were the only one at Sirius was critical of Obama. Yeah, but I was probably the or only he, one on Sir, Sirius no, left who was. Huh? A whole bunch of, of, of hosts that were critical of Obama, especially when it came to the drones. Uh, the uh, the deportations, mm -hmm. sure, yeah. a lot of them. Well, all I'm saying is, is that I I feel that the parties stick up for their own kind now, you know, and it, 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 you know Trump could go kill somebody on Fifth Avenue, like he said, and the Republicans would be going, eh, that's just Donald, you know. Yes, uh, yes, Charlie. Uh, I I. Uh would disagree with you partly on on that because the Democrats will uh, rat on or uh, rag on progressives far more than they will on Republicans. So I mean, it's not that they just attack the Republicans. Is it at the, is it is it at this point while they're in the nomination phase of everything, but that once they get a person who is going to be the standard bearer, they will back him without question. Well, I sure will. <laughs> I'll vote for whoever. Well, then, is but, but I don't think I think you're correct in the point that, but not to the point that we're seeing with Republican Party members and Trump, for example. Right. Because I mean, I think you're right about what you're saying. You know, if Trump shot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue, at first Rudy Giuliani would deny it. Now he didn't. He didn't shoot anybody. And then the next day he would say, "Well, he shot the guy, but it was in self-defense." Yeah. I, I, I mean, it would just evolve into this. I mean, and I think Democrats, at least from what I've noticed, would at least be like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. our guy shot that guy. We yeah. got to get it, get rid of him. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I I just don't understand. Fucking common sense. Yeah. 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 Yes, Jeff. I think Hillary is a good example of the Democrats who are unhappy with her, even when he when we were voting for her. Yeah, but uh, we 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 stood you know, with her. She was though. a she was a difficult person. I think. Well, I stood. And I think I, a lot of other people. Feel I the stood same. with her uh, when she was running, saying that you know who else am I going to vote for? You know, am I going to throw my vote away? Uh, that I'm going to go in there and I'm going to hold my nose and I'm going to pull the lever for Hillary, you know, because that's what I got to do. Although it d doesn't really matter. You see, I, th this goes back to me and my whole electoral college bullshit in that my um, uh, uh, vote uh, isn't counted. My vote is is simply mushed in with a whole bunch of other votes and then it comes out to like you know a total of 89 votes or something here in the state of new york or whatever the electoral college vote is that i'm not you know it's not like when i go and i vote for the mayor and the mayor got this person got so many votes and the other person got so many votes and the person who got the most votes wins it's that my vote for Hillary or anybody for that matter didn't matter because it was being condensed into just this small amount of people who and it was a winner take all state where you know whoever got the most votes in New York uh, was going to get the electoral votes from that from this state and we all knew there was no way Hillary was going to lose New York you know she would have to, like, you bear her left hit in public to lose. And, and then she probably wouldn't lose, although it would not be a pretty sight. You know. Yes, uh, uh, Tom. Well, I have the same dilemma in, in, in California. But what I, uh, you know, basically, uh, for, for me, I, I actually that's the reason why I went ahead and, and, and worked on the campaign. Because I mm -hmm. just wasn't going to sit down and just... Sit around and just vote because yeah. because my vote did. There's you know I, I gave I gave a donation, but more than that, I was actually making phone calls to other states. There was a whole bunch of us that made phone calls in other states, yeah. and the, I, and I would and I'll tell you the truth. Uh, 
uh, night after night uh, in this headquarters up in, uh, nearby, mm-hmm. uh, most of, most of the, the, the volunteers were women. And they were just so excited to have a woman president, uh, presidential candidate. And But, you know, we were just constantly calling. And I plan to do the same thing in the next election. I mean... We, we can't do we, we can't do just yeah, just but we actually let, have let to get me, let me, we actually let, have to get active. Let me throw this out to you because I'm watching you know I was watching MSNBC today and they, as usual they were you know they're they're handicapping the uh, the Democratic race and I'm going Jesus you know still we still got a year and three quarters left before mm-hmm. an election. Um, but anyway, <laughs> turn them off. <laughs> yeah, they're handicapping it and so on, and then they're going, um, "Gee, um, um, uh, it, uh, what do you? Wait, wait, what was the point I was going to make? I forgot what I was going to say. I can. It, it, I got, I got, I got so happened. wrapped up in <laughs> leading up to it. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, they. Uh, oh, uh, hmm. God, it was something about. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. They got into the whole thing about the Electoral College, you know, and, that, well, we should do away with it. And, uh, yeah, we all agree with that. So how come? <laughs> how come it still exists? Yes, uh, yes, Vernon. No, Vernon, yes. Yeah. It still exists because the constitutional amendment that would be required to do away with it is not going to happen in the current political environment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, t- uh, Charlie? Charlie? Well, um, there there is a way you can get around that, and that is that you have the electoral college. But California voted to have all of their electoral votes go to whoever wins the popular majority. In fact, there's so, a whole bunch of states. It is. Bunch, it, it is. Wait a minute. Is is California so a you state? Don't have to have an amendment. If all you have to yeah. do is agree that from now on our states gonna vote because electoral college literally can vote any way they want. They are not required. Oh no, they can go to Washington and vote for for Tom Yamaguchi if they wanted yeah. to. And, and it's just that they, you know, the states themselves passed that law that says yeah, that but, we have to wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Whoever in, wins our state in in Cal? Did you say in California or Arizona they're doing that? California, yeah. California is one that I know about. And I think New well, York. Well, what are they did. saying? The winner will get them. Will get all the electoral 12, votes. Twelve states plus the District of Columbia. Twelve states yeah. plus the District. of Columbia have passed that law. Now, that, well, but so what, hap- what happened? Whoever wins the popular vote, like well, Hillary would have gotten all of the electoral votes, regardless, because she won the popular vote. But in, Cal- Cal- in California, in California, in it, isn't example. it a winner takes all state? I mean, New York is. Yeah, New York. yeah but yeah. The, which way it goes depends. The way it goes now is the winner takes all whoever won that state. So you can win that state by one vote, you get all the electoral college votes. Ooh. Oh, so what they're saying is nationally, if Hillary were nationally, to win. Nationally, whoever gets the majority of the votes, votes gets they the, get that state's electoral votes. And 12 states have already voted. Why don't we that. just do away with that and just count fucking votes? Because that, that takes, makes sense. Um, that takes a constitutional <laughs> yeah, constitutional amendment. Right. Yeah. That'll work. This is something I brought up before, Alex. Yeah. And that's yeah. the national popular vote interstate compact. Mm-hmm. And what that interstate compact is, is to try to get enough states to pass this law, which the Constitution allows individual states to decide how they're going to select yeah. their electors. So that's the way they would and solve it. It does, yeah. not, it does not go into effect, though, until enough states pass this law mm-hmm. so that 270 electoral votes are in play. Yeah, Otherwise, right. the way the law is right now is the way it's going to be. But until enough states pass the NPVIC, when 270 electoral votes are in play, then the national popular vote is going to decide who's president. Because what I've been saying, you know, the last couple of nights uh, on this program, uh, and I will, of course, say it again until I'm blue in the face, and that is that uh, I think we got to do away with the electoral college, but Besides that, I think we should do away with primaries. I don't think primaries serve any purpose. I think we should do it like they used to do it. I don't know. When were the first primaries? Do you know, Josh, at all? They, they were like in the last century. It wasn't... It wasn't uh, primaries. 
like in the 20s or 30s maybe probably, probably sometime a little after that i think yeah okay so yeah, it, i don't i so, don't know the answer so before that they would go and hold a convention and the yeah. 20 people that want the job are all fighting for it on the floor of the convention and there's something like 30 votes they take before they finally come up with their their standard bearer and then they say here he is you either vote for him or don't you know and that way to begin with how many millions of dollars does each state spend in just the process of doing a primary, which only serves the function of helping out these parties figure out who their who their candidates going to be? Yeah, there, uh, yeah. I mean, prior to, to what you're talking about, even there was even a time where it was considered improper to campaign for the nomination to be your party's representative. You know, mm -hmm. on the ticket, it was you know it was kind of considered. Uh, and proper to seem like you wanted the job, you know. I mean, the presidency was always thought of of a job, you know. Uh, a good man would take it, you know, because he was, you know, the right man for the job. But if you wanted it, you were kind of seen as, you know, over ambitious, right? You well, know? if we I mean, did away with the primaries, if, if we did away with the primaries, uh, we could start uh, the whole electoral process, say, sometime in January or February, in which everybody says, who wants to be running for their party, and then they're going to get a bunch of people together, and they're going to go to the convention, and they're going to start the, on the on the floor of the convention, they're going to start fighting for each other, and then they're going to take one vote, and nobody wins, two votes, three votes. Sometimes I, I hear we in, in the history of uh, these conventions, there have been up to like thirty votes or something before they came up with a with a with a with no, a person. I, I, to run. I think there have been more than that, to be honest with you. Yeah, uh, I mean, I could be wrong. I'm just saying what yeah. I seem to remember. Yeah, I, I don't know what the most ever anything was, but I I seem to remember cases where there was even more. You know, where the the the, the convention as we would think of it now, you know, went on for you know. Days and days. Well, the conventions were all five days long. Now they're down to what, four? I don't know. And, and one of those days is taken up with festivities. Something of, like, right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something like that. I, I, I mean, I usually have it on, but I only pay attention when Scarlett Johansson and Eva Longoria. <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 I certainly can. I, I sympathize with you. Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, but I mean, the point I'm making is that I think that uh, that the, the whole primary then then once we get the conventions and they have their standard bearers, then we have maybe maybe a, a three month uh, uh, campaigning period in which they do all their campaigning and they go out and they make their case, and then we have election day. Mm -hmm. But to do this for what? two years prior to the next election that 50 percent of our time is taken up with this process is absolutely absurd yes tom well i disagree with you about about uh, about getting rid of the primaries but i definitely agree with you that the elect the uh, the process is way too long i think we can have primaries and just and really shorten the season but i think that i have a couple theories on how this how that ended up happening and one of them is money uh that it costs a lot of money to uh, to run for president and so there's a national inclination to start earlier and earlier and citizens united has even made it worse mm -hmm. so 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 candidates have to get out and and start early and then the other thing mm -hmm. that I've noticed too is that is the change of, of of the media. I mean, we have a more national media going on, and so there's less a less of uh, you know like newspapers, particularly mm -hmm. local newspapers, yeah. local TV and and radio stations. They're struggling yeah. and being replaced by entities like MSNBC and Fox and CNN. And what is what are they going to do? Are they going to spend time on, let's say, a uh, a, a state uh, legislator race in Idaho or something like that, or mm -hmm. or a congressional seat in 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 uh, Michigan? No, they're going to focus on where all the voters are focused on, and that is the presidential election, right? Yeah. So. So, so that's that's a couple of real implements. For, well, well, you know, why, why, is it, why, why is it why is it why is it why is it you're why is it you're wedded to the primary system? 
I mean, yes, in your lifetime there have been primaries, but they didn't start till maybe the 20s or 30s or maybe even into the 40s. I, we'd have to look it up. Uh, but it was not the order of the day. It was not the way we did business all the time. Well, and, and, sometimes and, you can do things better. <laughs> it, no, but what it, what the primaries what the I, here's here's what the primaries have done. Number one, they cost the states a fortune because they have to hold the elections and they have to have people <laughs> manning those elections and they have to count the votes and everything like that. On top of that, uh, you've got people spending immense fortunes just to do advertising and. Politicking, politicking in that state, politicking, uh, politicking in that state, okay? Uh, uh, so, I mean, if we do away with all that, we'll start saving some money here, you know? I mean, there's a, just when we talk about the fact that now to win a presidency is going to cost a billion dollars, oh how much of that is the primaries? You know? You know, I, I, am I wrong, but I, I think Aren't there uh, some European countries that basically do their uh, top ticket type of elections in a very short? I, I mean, you you can't campaign for it outside of certain time frames, correct? England, I, I think don't know I it's think that way in Great Britain, I may be I, wrong. I are, Great Britain, I think it's a three month window. I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, and that's it. You know uh, that, and every now and then you have a vote of confidence happen. You know which Theresa May may be up against now, you know, but uh, we could use that here. We could use that yeah. here, uh, but he'd have uh, to. Tomorrow's he, he, fine. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow's <laughs> fine. Yes, Tom. Yeah, week. Wait a minute. Well, welcome to Kevin, by the way. How's the uh, how's the thing working for you? The back. Oh, I haven't turned it on yet. Oh, I haven't turned it on yet. Okay. Oh. Well, then we won't feel sorry for you or happy for you till they turn it on. The 25th. Oh, okay. And what happens if you don't pay your bill, they turn it off? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's the new modern <laughs> medicine, yeah. folks. Yeah, pay us or we'll turn it off. Yes, Tom. Exactly. Tom. It's like a cable bill. Kevin, you're still stapled, right? Yeah, I'm still stapled up. I just yeah. went to the doctor today. Yeah. It looks good. Yeah. So far. Yeah. Uh, yes, Tom, you had your hand up there earlier. Well, I was just say, just to answer your questions uh, earlier about the primaries, I, I do want to have a say on, on who, who I get to vote for in November. I, and, and there's a lot of, of uh, you know, it's people that can come out of nowhere, like like uh, Jimmy Carter or, or Barack Obama. Can I, can I ask like you a that, question, Tom? They don't have the, the, you know, necessarily the, the establishment behind them. Can I ask you a question, Tom? In sure. the last presidential primary in California, who'd you vote for? Uh, last, uh, I did vote for, let's see, 20, well, that was 2016. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I did vote for Hillary Clinton. You voted for Hillary Qu Qu Clinton in the primary? How yes. does, How did that go for you? <laughs> well, as I said, <laughs> uh, I thought she was the best candidate. Uh, I really thought she would make a great president. Uh, and uh, I would do it again. As I said, I worked for her campaign. Yeah. Uh, I really, I really think that uh, that things would be a lot different if she had won. I wish I had been able to do more. Yeah. I, I, all I, I'm I saying is, all I, I'm saying uh, is, I was so really frustrated on the phone because I was said, "There's only one thing that's that's going to defeat us, and that's complacency." Let's and, put, let's put it this way. And that's the case. It, we were defeated by complacency. Okay, but wait a yeah. moment. Yeah. But hold on a second. Uh, and I don't think we were defeated by complacency because they, she got three million more votes than uh, than Trump did. So people did get out and vote for her. Okay. No, not enough. Not enough. Not especially in the Wisconsin, states, especially the states uh, up in the upper Midwest. A lot of people they stayed home. They voted for Jill Stein. They just. They just didn't realize. How, well, how, how do you feel? How do you how do you feel? Uh, you know, you know. How do you feel about the Jill Steins of the world, who are kind of spoilers in a way? I mean, I know that you, people will argue with me. Oh well, we need to have that, and I agree. I wish we had ten people running, and then it was boiled down to two, and then we voted for those two, like they do in Europe. Yeah. But that that isn't the way we do it here. So right. so whoever is 
that person like Jill Stein that all the Illuminati decide they're going to vote for because it's it's a hip thing to do uh, are really the people who put Trump in office. Well, one of the problems that we had uh, was our side didn't take the Supreme Court as seriously as their side. They knew the Supreme Court was on the line. And they got out. And so talk about holding your nose in voting. Yeah. I think all the Republicans fell in line and they knew that how important the court was and they were gonna line up with, with Trump. And that's what that's what made the difference. We didn't we didn't take the the, the election seriously enough. And hopefully that'll change it in, in twenty twenty. Well, uh, we didn't take the, the the election seriously enough. I I do think we did. I uh, although I got to tell you, there was a certain complacency in this respect <coughs> that nobody figured Trump could win. <laughs> okay, that's where the complacency was, and that that. Uh, well, that's what exactly what I was talking. I mean, about. I remember I remember my okay. wife the ni- election night. I went in around midnight. And, and she was kind of, you know, she, she was in, in and out of sleep, and she woke up, and she looked at me, and she said, has anybody won yet? And I said, yes. She said, who? I said, Trump. And her first words are, oh, my God. I mean, that's not the thing we expected that night. Oh, you know, we, we, we gave America more credit for intelligence than they have. You know, we, we figured, nah, they're not going to vote for him. He said, he's a clown. But that clown is now our president, and we we he's made the best of what the two over two years he's been in office in just making our lives a living fucking hell. Mm-hmm. Everybody's but- tax rate is higher than it was because he was cutting the tax rate back. You know, uh, the the uh, 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 the air is not as clean as it was. You know, uh, and our commitment to that sort of thing in this world is is completely gone. I mean, we, he's ruined our uh, our uh, relationship with the rest of the world. They look upon us as a goddamn clown show. You know, so it's amazing how in a short amount of time he's managed to do the damage he has done. And I didn't think it was possible. As I as I said, well, you know, what damage? How much damage could he really do? And the answer is very apparent. I, we can start listing it now. We wasted four years not doing anything about climate change. Yeah. Well, you know what I love? I love the kids today because they've been holding these demonstrations on climate. And what they were saying uh, that was uh, is pretty good is they're saying, you know, you don't have to live with this. We're going to have to. Yep. You know, and what you're doing essentially is you're killing your children. Yep. yep. You know. So, I mean, that, my kid's one of them. Huh? Yeah. My kid's one of them. Yep. 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 So you know, you, you just you just you just wonder, you know, what uh, um, uh, those kids are are. It was when, uh, who was we, we? Somebody's kid we had on the other day that we were talking to. Uh, uh, it was what? It was name? Dave, wasn't it? Dave, Dave, Dave who oh, called up with yeah. his kid, and I said to the kid, "You know, what do you think about this world you're getting?" And the, she even, at her age, knew it was a terrible thing. That she the, reminded me of my daughter. Yeah, exactly. Would your daughter exactly. say the same thing? Yep, same thing. You know, what kind of fucking world are you handing us? Yep, exactly. Yeah, well, that's why I want her to be involved in this stuff and know what's mm-hmm. going on. You know, and she. She's she understands what's going How on. How old is she? She's 13, 14 now. 14 now. Okay. Yes, Vernon. Yeah. Vernon. The the mayor from South Bend was on Morning Joe this morning and mm-hmm. they were asking him about why he wants to be president and he had a very good answer I thought. He said I'm concerned about 2054. And they said 2054, he said, "Yeah, that's when I'm the age of the current president." what the world's going to be like. Yep. Hmm. Buttigieg. Yeah. Buttigieg? Uh, yeah. Buttigieg. Yeah. Yeah. The name, another name we can't pronounce. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> t- uh, Tony. Here's a question, though. Would, I would have thought 
the generation of the 60s had it harder. You had no, people had no rights. You had a war going on. I mean, I would hate to be an adolescent in the 60s. Uh, you were getting drafted into a war that you were coming home in body bags. They had it worse than this generation. Well, well wait, uh, you know something? Uh, it's all, you know, bad is bad, and there are different kinds of bad. And I agree with you. That was horrible. The fact that people had to go over and be used as cannon fodder in a war that made no sense at all, that we finally lost. And I went on the air in the, here in New York, and I said, you know, we're, we're leaving Vietnam. How do you feel about the fact that your kid died for nothing? Yeah. You know, and, and because we have to, we, we can't just suddenly say, oh, let's honor the 58,000 dead uh, Vietnam vets. Uh, you have to say, what a waste of human beings. You know, and yep. I know it's hard to say that to a parent, but that's yeah. the way you put a price on the war and what it cost you. So it, it had its own horrible moments. But yeah. these kids tomorrow are going to have to face gasping for air, okay, yep. because of what we didn't do today. And that's what these kids are saying, and I, I really appreciate it. They're going to be looking for clean water, too, no water to drink. Well, you know, there are parts of this world right now where water is uh, there's a price on water. You know, and if you, uh, if you, and in these parts of the world, companies who deal in the water, if it's raining and you put a bucket out and catch water in the bucket, they will sue you or have you thrown in jail. Jail. For taking the water that's coming down from the clouds. You know, it, 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 we, it, that, that's something that's been going on for quite a while now. And, you know, we don't do enough yelling and screaming about it. But that's happening in South America. So it's like a world away. You know. But I, I, it's just, I, I just think that, uh, that, you know, we need to do that. We need, uh, we need to limit how much money people can pay. I mean, I wouldn't mind paying a little more taxes if it went to a fund to finance people who were running for office and they couldn't spend yep. any money they got anywhere else but from this fund. Here, you've got uh, $100 million to run your campaign and you've got $100 million to run yours and you've got $100 million to run yours and that's it. You know, it, it comes out of a slush fund and uh, you can't go around... Uh, trying to get people to bankroll your uh, campaign so that later on you're going to do something nice for them. Yep. You know, uh, we need we need a lot of we need a lot of reforms, and I don't think we're going to see them because it's not in the best interest of the power politic. No, they like the way they're being elected. You know, I got to tell you, this is stra this strange kind of change in the tale. But when I was first to start out in radio, we had a thing called ratings. And when you got a ratings book, you either won or you lost. And, and, and money was made and lost on ratings. I mean, people don't understand that ratings were never used to say who's the best show in town. Mm. No, ratings were used to establish the price of advertising on a particular radio station based on cost per thousand. All right. Well, you know, that being the case, uh, we for the longest time felt that, well, that was the best thing we got. But then one day they came out and they came out with a thing called people meters. And this was something people put on their belt. And it simply listened to a signal coming out of your radio and it could tell what you were listening to at any given moment. And you didn't write in a diary, which was a very bad method of, of finding out what people were listening to. And so the whole thing changed, and stations that were once number one, I can name one, KGO in San Francisco, was a uh, radio station that for 35 years was number one. The minute the people meters came out, they went down to number 20. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay? Because all of a sudden, we knew what people really were listening to. Okay? Well, the same is true about how people are being elected today. They're being elected by a bunch of standards which are kind of questionable. 
And if we change all that, they're going to have to learn that the guy who you thought was number one and had all the votes from his area really didn't have the hearts of his area. You know, and that we've got to we've got to change the way we do business. We've got to stop the money infusion into politics and and pay for it ourselves and give the people some money. And here's here's, you know, here's one hundred thousand dollars. Go out and, you know, you can you can blow it on saltwater taffy if you want to. But that's the money you're getting for your campaign. And maybe we'd have some kind of honesty in politics going on. Yes, Tom. Well, one reform that I support and uh, we've got it going on in, in Berkeley, they just started it last year in, in all state of Maine, yeah. is called ranked choice voting. And uh, I think I think it really would make it a lot e a lot easier for candidates to to uh, to to get uh, to connect with voters so that this thing of the lesser of two evils no longer comes into play. If you've got uh, an opportunity to select your rank choice of three different candidates, yeah. you could say, well, I really love this person, but I don't think that person could win. But if I, if I you know, make that person my first choice, I can make this other person my second choice who has a better shot at it. So I'm not give, actually giving, throwing my vote away. Uh, that that I've heard that that theory that you know that we, we take the three people and then you average something out and then one of the people wins and it may not be the person who got the well anyway. Yeah, it's also known as instant runoff voting. Yeah. So in a way, that's also a way to re, uh, to replace what's called a primary, mm -hmm. uh, so that that the lowest the the, the candidate with the lowest uh, amount of votes they're eliminated and then those that hit that person's votes get redistributed up to 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 other candidates Either that or how about just a, how about candidate gets, has over 50 percent how about just a situation where uh, you have a bunch of people vote and then uh, the uh, the top people if nobody gets 50 percent then you take the top people the top two three people or yeah. top two people and, and, and you have them run what, against actually, each other this is what we have in california is right now for the whole state, we have uh, the top two. So, so in the primary, and, and I think it, it can be, it can be. It was a couple a while back, wasn't it? Two Democrats running against each other. We've yeah. had a number of. We've had our last two Senate races mm -hmm. where we've had two Democrats running against each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. So all the candidates, regardless of party, are listed on the ballot, mm -hmm. and and everybody votes, and the first and the the top two. Uh, go on to the general election, and 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 then we they the winner of that becomes the, any the of these uh, any of these ideas are good, and they also have some negatives too. Josh, do you see any negatives in that particular system? I mean, he's turning his mic on. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I've had this really bad cough, so I've been muting the mic. Uh, <clears throat> um, negatives in that, you know what? I don't think so. I mean, I, especially as far as runoffs and stuff go, I mean, like he said, you know, it's kind of a more of an instant uh, way to, you know, so it's a time saver there. And, you know, if you save time, you save money. And save money. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, be, I mean, I've always thought that's a little odd, you know, so, so many of these, you know, special elections and then they're running, then they turn around and basically have like the same exact election, you know, six or eight weeks later. So they just continue to spend, as you said, outrageous amounts of money for, you know, six or eight more weeks. And I, I think most of the time the outcome ends up, you know, the same or whatever. But we had one of those right here outside of Columbus, Ohio, not that long ago with what that Pat T. Berry and someone else running for Congress. And it was really close. And then another runoff. And then it turned out to be the same. And, you know, for an open congressional seat and. You know, uh, they spent you know outrageous amounts of money. I mean, just for a just for a congressional seat. I mean, it wasn't even you know a a huge power seat. You know, just a just a typical you know one congressman. And it, it I can't even remember the number, but it, you know it was obviously in the millions and millions of dollars between the two campaigns. I mean, that's ridiculous for a house seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, but the question is. Uh, we, we, we're sitting here talking about all of this, but what's it going to take to to change things? And and that's that's the big question here. Um, 
I don't know. And, and you know, the other element of the because we're, we're going to keep that saying that we're going to keep is. saying this and it's only going to get worse and worse. You yeah. know, when you think that people went out and we talked about gerrymandering where they took a district and they managed to make curves and little dips and dives in it to make it into a, a more Republican uh, area or something like that. The fact that they could do gerrymandering alone says the whole system sucks and is wrong. You know, if you can wind up doing that, what else can they do? And they're going to keep doing it as long as they can get away with it. And so consequently, yes, the KGO that was number one and finally was number 20, if we shone the light of reality on the elections, we'd see who really was popular. Yes, Tom. Well, what needs to happen is people need to realize that their state legislatures and their state governors are important and they need to vote in those elections because when they don't, then then somebody else gets in controls and does and does the uh, does the redistricting. So people are finally waking up to that. I mean, that's the good news. That's to me, that's as good a news from the last election, the 2018 election, as the retaking of the House is the Democrats retook over a number of state legislatures. And that's going to be really important for redistricting in 2020. Now, do you think that and is, do you, yeah, do you and think, governors, right? yeah, and governors too, do you think that that was a result of the dissatisfaction of Donald Trump? Uh, do you yeah. think that that has an indication of what might go on in 2020? And now my question, and the big one is, we know the Democrats are going to fuck it up. How are they going to fuck it up? <laughs> Because, I'm not assume that. because if I saw Donald Trump and the way he's been reacting, say, in the, just the last couple of days being, you know, with, with what was it, something like 50 tweets over the weekend, and they're, they're insane, and they're ramblings, and they're things that he shouldn't even be caring about. Uh, thank you very much, Mickey. My, my, I'm trying to put my watch on, and I hit Mickey Mouse. Uh, anyway, um you would think that just that pure action alone would have the American public say, uh, we can't vote for this guy again. This guy's crazy. You know, I, well, I may be I may be a Republican, but I can't vote for him. Well, I mean, he he visited Ohio today. Yeah. And prior to the visit, you know, last night, uh, I read an article in the Cincinnati Enquirer, uh, you know, that basically said, you know, Trump's visiting Ohio, but does Ohio still love him? And the answer was no. The latest polling indicates that he's down in Ohio, and I don't remember the number, but it's like 11 or 12 points yeah. from what he received in the election, which is quite a lot. I mean, it's it's an amount that if it holds, he's not going to win the state. And without Ohio, he, he's probably not going to so, win so, you know, re-election. Okay, let's talk about what I just said. That, you know, it's kind of like... Uh, Somebody, I think it was Joe Garagiola once said, uh, uh, the great thing about the uh, Mets was uh, that you knew when a high fly went up, uh, somebody was not going to catch it, but the big thrill was to figure out who. Uh, my question here is, is about the same. We know that the Democrats are capable of picking the wrong person. We certainly did it last time, okay? And we could do it again. Uh, who is the wrong person of all the field we have out there? Who are some of the wrong people? There's too many out there right Joe. now. <laughs> uh, what, what, what were you saying, Jeff? Joe. <laughs> Joe. Uh -huh. Joe Biden. Yeah. Joe what? Biden. Yeah. Would you agree, I, uh, I, Vernon? That's... Yeah. He's leading in the polls right now. But he is the second oldest of the candidates, Bernie Sanders being the oldest. Yeah, yeah. Now, my question is, do you think, uh, do you, uh, do you, uh, number one, I, I guess Biden's going to go for it, but I think he's in for a big surprise. Uh, he certainly doesn't yeah. have the money the other guys do right now. And again, as we much as I like <laughs> Biden, I don't think he's going he's gonna to make it. You know, I like the guy, but he's, I think he's past his time. I think he's yeah, past. He, I think he's past his time. You know, but he's, uh, but he's smart, but it's just a long time for him to go. How old is he now? Seventy-eight. 
Eight seventy seven. He yeah. he was born in nineteen forty two. Okay. No. no. Okay. Now we oh, got yeah. to do Okay. Nineteen forty two. Well, I was born in nineteen thirty nine. So he's seventy six, probably. Six. Okay. And how old is how old so, is how old yeah. is Trump right now? Uh, wait, real or in his 72? mind? Yeah. Really is what? <laughs> yeah, but his mind is about eighty eight, ninety. Or it's eight. <laughs> or, yeah. Or it's eight. <laughs> what? 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 Uh, uh, Tony. I don't want to sound like an ageist, but should there be a an age limit? How old you can be for the president? Just I, for health reasons? I think so. There is. No, there is. You have to be so many uh, what forty years at least. Yeah, but I'm you, you have to be, like, no, you have to be thirty-five, like, like thirty-five, say seventy-five or more. You, you can be as oh, you could be you could be ninety-two and run for president. Yeah, I, mean, that, well, be, yeah. sound, I know we can get sick at yeah. any age, and, but and, I, you know, I mean, know. I I don't want to be ages, but since I'm seventy-nine, I have the right to. I be. don't want to go to work now. Can I, you imagine being the president at seventy-eight? I have a right to be. I think that even at my age, if I if I think about, could I have been president, say at seventy-eight, okay, or seventy-seven? <laughs> Uh, and you got to remember, he's going to be. I think he's going to be seventy-eight when the election takes place. Okay, that's oh, I when saying, I think yeah. about how I felt at seventy-eight and the kind of uh, um, uh, 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 vigor I had, and so on. I think about it now. I'm one year later than that. Uh, I'm not that uh, certain. I could. I, I could be president. You know. I think that it, it's a job for a younger person. It's a job for a person who has, a, you know, a, 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 all his faculties going for him. Mine are waning. I know that. I'm I, I, at my age. I know that it 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 it, it happens. Uh, to I, I, huh? Because I'm looking at it now. I don't want. I'm not, I'm not trying to make a joke of it. I don't want to go to work now. Can you imagine having to go to work? At that type of job at seventy five, he should. Is it more of an ego thing? Like I got to get my name, I got to be out there. Just step away already. You want to monk for the camera you, you, still? Well, I just I, I I agree with you, Tony. I I mean, does it, anybody disagree that that Joe Biden's too old for this? Uh, I I don't think he's too old. No, you don't. No, okay. I'm, I'm in the extreme minority here, apparently. Yeah. Because you've got a, you've got a, a, another person with you, Josh. I don't think he's too uh, too old either. I, I not only do I not think he's too old, I personally think that just living in the area that I live in and knowing the people that are going to swing the election like I do from an area like this, I think he's the only person they're going to run that's not going to turn independent people off. Because I think Democrats, if they run someone that we would all love, I agree that we would love, uh, you know, the Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren types and everything because, you know, we're kind of ultra left people. But we're going to vote for the Democratic nominee no matter what. I think the party has to find someone that's going to get other people to vote, you know, for that nominee. And I, I just think that if we start hearing a lot of talk about things that we might agree with, like, Democrats are, have been ginning this thing up the last few days about the Electoral College. And I'm not even going to say whether I like it or whether I don't like it. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to say if that becomes a big issue during the general election, it's just going to play right into Trump's hands and let him run around and say, see, they just want to change because I want. And, and it's like and it's a non-issue to me. It's it's not. I mean, it's, it's just a the, mm -hmm. Democrats are really good about, like you said, fucking up and and focusing on stuff like that. And I just think if if they focus on the electoral college and let's break up Google and, yeah. and you know, those kinds of things, it's going to turn people off that live in the blue collar working class areas like I live that really don't care about that. They're going to go right back to Trump where they were. And I think Biden is the only guy that they're going to run that would have enough sense to realize that. I think the Beto O'Rourke's and all the rest of them are going to just – you know, run to the left because they think that's their time. And I, I just, I, I mean, hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm just saying that's what I think. I mean, don't you think that some of the some of the voters in the last election that didn't have a a, a big uh, preference for Hillary and may have jumped the ship and gone over to Trump just because they wanted to see a change? Yeah. And there was a lot of voters that did that. And that could happen again, just because of. Or that. they stayed at home. 
or they stayed at home. But, you know, there was a lot, you know, when you saw after the election and all this stuff happened and Trump was in office, there was a lot of interviews that went on that that showed that there was Democrats that said, you know what, I wasn't I wasn't convinced that Hillary was going to do a good job. So I just said, you know, I'm going to take a chance on Trump. Right, and, and I, but I don't, I don't think that Joe Biden would turn people off in in the way. No, that that's that's she the did. point. Because I think he's a hell of a lot more, you know, likable uh, type of guy. And, and I tell you what, I heard something yesterday that basically said they think maybe the reason that his announcement has taken so long and has been delayed. And this is a really interesting concept because no one's really tried to do it yet. Is because they think he might want to announce. And at the time that he announces, already align himself with a vice presidential candidate and say, this is the ticket that I'm going to run. And the rumored person to be was uh, Stacey Abrams, who ran, you know, for governor down there in Georgia. You know, a yeah. black woman. Yeah. Oh, I and knew. I, I, I don't know. I, yeah. When I first heard it, my eyebrows perked up. That, yeah, that might I be agree. kind of an ingenious no, I knew what, I, I knew. I knew what I was going to say, that a lot, a lot of these earlier, and then I forgot because I got all wrapped up in my rhetoric. Uh, that that uh, they all these people on these shows on MSNBC are talking about. Well, you know, he really should have a woman or a black man or a black woman, and blah 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 blah. And I stopped to think about it, and I said, you know, I am so non-racist and so non-misogynistic that, quite frankly, I just want to see the best person running as the vice presidential candidate. Yeah. You know? And by the way, as long as we're talking about that, are you really saying that we're we're, we're going to go with a, an, another white male as a candidate? I mean, there are women running here, you know, so why all this discussion about, you know, asking uh, uh, somebody you know, like a candidate, well, who would you put on your team? <coughs> who would you make your vice president? Would it be a woman or a black person? Uh, well, I certainly would consider that. Don't even ask that. You want the best person. And if the best person Correct. is white and you happen to be white, then that should be the person who you have on, as your second person. That's you it. know, not saying, oh, we've got to balance it all out or we've got to have a woman as president. Yeah, if it works or, out that way, great. You know, we already had a black guy as president. We, we broke a certain barrier there. But you don't sit down and, and then he had as his vice president the whitest man in america joe biden you know He's uh, white. you yeah. know um uh, yes tom too. yes tom so i agree yeah we definitely should uh, find the best person and you know the way that we gonna, we're going to do that is through the primaries it's through the debates <laughs> here we go the primaries and, yeah yeah, yeah. It, that's how we're how we're gonna. I don't know who the first person is. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the candidates. I'm willing to let it play out and see. I mean, I I think what we got to do is trust the process. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, you know, I, I'm not going to rule out anybody. I'm not ruling out Biden. I'm not ruling out anybody. And I'll tell you this, as I said before, whoever the nominee is, I am going to work all I can to get that person elected. Yeah. OK. And whatever it takes, I'm going to do that job. Okay. And, with, and if enough people do the same commitment, we can do it. But again, we're getting away from the question I asked. So we haven't had an answer except somebody yelled out Biden. Who would be the one of all of these so far or or the well, two or three? Wait a minute. I don't two, rule two, out anybody. No, no. The two or three that perhaps would be the wrong person to run. At this don't point. don't rule out anybody. Let people come in oh. and and mix things up and get you want, involved. Oh, you want me to rule out somebody? I'll rule out. I'll rule out. I'll, I'll rule out the. I'll rule out the godsend of the of the of the candidates, and I want to be uh, have, let yeah, the voters decide. But I will rule out who the person is. I'm sorry. I got people. I'll rule out. I I rule out Biden. I, th I think the only thing Biden could do is give Trump a run for his money, but we're even assuming that Donald Trump will be the nominee of the Republican Party. You know, well, we're uh, assuming a lot of things. Uh, but I'm telling you, uh, I'll so tell you the one guy, the, the one guy, now and November 2020, the one guy that should move over to the side and say, I'm going to back whoever runs and I'm going to be there for them and I'm going to do whatever I can to make them win is Bernie Sanders. I think he should get out of there. I think he's a spoiler. 
And I think he's going to he's going to hurt the chances of people who are. But he's raised you know, billions of dollars. He's got he's that, got that, people oh, that well, really support him. Why well, why why shut them up? I, uh, why shut why them up? Because because they're because they're wrong and he can't win. You're the ones going to determine that they are wrong. Yes. <laughs> why? Hey, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Get the magic eight ball out. Yeah, yeah, my magic eight ball. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I rule a lot of people out already in my mind. I, and I, I'm agreeing with Tom. I mean, I'm going to let it play out. I'm not telling people, you you know, oh, you can't support that person. I mean, everyone's allowed to do But I'm just saying there are people in my mind that, uh, you know, what, what I hear them, you know, talk or, or speak, I, I just, I don't have any sort of, I mean, if they were on the ticket it to, and the election were today and it were Trump or that person, obviously I would vote for that person. But I'm just saying when I turn the TV on and Kamala Harris is talking, I just say, I, I, oh, this is my excited face, you know? Yeah. Look at it. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> this, is my, just, this is my excited you know? face. But anyway, um, uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is that we have to think in terms of who can win. Uh, for instance, here's the thing with Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders entered this race because he was the voice of the left in the last election. Uh, certainly, certainly Hillary wasn't. She was the voice of the moderates, okay? And so, so he got a lot of heat behind him, got a lot of heat behind him, uh, as, he, as he should have. But now he's got a bunch of people who got... M ideas that are as progressive as his, if not more so. So he, he's not running in the same pack he was running before. You know, he's not the outsider any longer. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when you listen to Kamala Harris, when you listen to uh, any one of the, the women who are running, uh, even Elizabeth uh, Warren, uh, uh, you're hearing women who are coming up with really strong ideas. You get a Cory Booker, he's got strong ideas. He, uh, you know, and they're all kind of off to the side there. And while he says he's a socialist and they don't say they're a socialist, uh, they're acting more like socialists in many cases than Bernie Sanders is. So does he, does he really have a chance? How does he look given the fact that there's all these other people who are coming to the table with the same kind of lefty ideas that make me feel comfortable as Bernie Sanders did. Yeah. So I don't I I I don't think Bernie Sanders beats Donald Trump in a general election. Oh, I, no, I just know no. it was a it. I don't think so either. I, think yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not the arbiter of all this stuff. I fucking can be wrong. I'm just saying uh, if if you, you you know this is a show where people give their opinions you know <laughs> so that, that's uh, I I heard an interview with uh, Klobuchar the other day, uh, and she's very good. I think she could hold her own in a general election. You know, uh, uh, th th there are a lot of people out there, but it, it, we still don't have that one. You know, the thing is, when I as I <clears> say I've said this before, when I saw Barack Obama, I said, well, there he is. There's the stealth candidate, right? Had everything going for him. Good looks, spoke well, spoke incredibly well, yeah. uh, was incredibly confident with the public, uh, and uh, it could beat uh, just about anybody. I mean, he was that, 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 that much of a stealth candidate, in my opinion. There isn't a stealth candidate here, at least one that appears to be. That You know, I mean, a Beto O'Rourke they keep talking about, but I can't see him, okay? It just he doesn't make like sense. He looks like to me. <laughs> I mean, he does. Every time I look at him, he looks like a phony. Well, guy. it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I could see him running as a vice presidential candidate, you know, <laughs> with, with whoever was running. That would be a nice... You know, he would be nice eye candy on the on the ticket. Yeah, he looks right? like he's so like oh, so that you could run somebody a little oh. ugly. You could run somebody a little more severe for president. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but um, how about the women? Uh, the women who are running. Any of them appeal to you? I like Amy Klobuchar. Yeah, yeah. I think she's I think she's very good, and I've heard what she has to say, and I like it. You know. She's in my camp. I think Kamala Harris is interesting. I think she, uh, um, 
they're all trying to stake out their own little area. I think mm-hmm. who was it? Was it was it Kamala Harris or was it Klobuchar? Or it oh, it was Elizabeth <clears throat> Warren who wanted to go out after uh, after um, uh, uh, Facebook and uh, oh yeah, and, sure. yeah. Uh, you know. See, that's why I love her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I got to tell you something. I would like to not like Elizabeth Warren, but whenever she talks about what she believes in, I don't have much of a problem with her. You know, the only problem is I don't think she's a winnable candidate because you got to be television ready today. And she's not. Yeah, and, and it's and it's going to be a lot about, you know, obviously, you know, the independent voter who may switch sides. I mean, we're all voting for the Democrat, you know, I mean, but it's just like, I, I, don't, I can't really even explain it, but, you know, like my wife, for example, uh, I mean, you know, she's just the same politically as I am, and she's going to vote for the nominee, et cetera. You know, Democratic-minded, never voted Republican or anything. And, I mean, I don't really don't know, but like Elizabeth Warren <laughs> comes on TV, and she's just like, oh, I just... I can't do it. You know, she's like, I don't even want to, you know, she can't stand her, you know? So, I mean, it's like, well, no, but you know what you it is, what it is, if, if, you closed your, if you closed your eyes and listened to her, you'd say, yeah. she's not bad. Huh? She's smart. She's sharp. She's got some good ideas and so on. Then you look she at her, the consumer finance, you look at her and you say, <laughs> I don't want to have to look at this woman for four years, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, covered my wife has the same. Wait, 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 wait. We're cheated out of that money. Uh, Ver, my Verna? wife has the same reaction as Josh's. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. So, uh, my so wife I mean, has I guess the same reaction as Josh's about things. Elizabeth yeah. Warren. Yeah. yeah. She scares me. So, if Elizabeth <laughs> Warren can't get a woman's vote, who is she going to get? <laughs> she won't get felt, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Now. <laughs> she won't get <laughs> <laughs> no, she won't Imagine get bills. Imagine he's older for by accident, he'd probably break the machine. <laughs> here, here, here comes Tim at the last minute. He might think he he probably thinks he's calling Jack. But hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, hello. Uh, uh, hello uh, there, uh, t- Tim. How are you? Real good. Yeah. Yeah. Busy. Yeah, you're busy. Um, grandkids around. Yeah. Regular kids. Yeah. What about what, what, you want to join in on what we were saying here? Well, I agree with you, Elizabeth Warren. I've had her as soon as Trump won. <laughs> I've had her on my Facebook and my Twitter as my cover page since Trump law, uh, won the election. Yeah, <laughs> uh, she's she's smart. She can explain things like a teacher. Um, but Buttigieg, 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 the Buttigieg or whatever his name is, <laughs> he is. He's a genius too. Yeah. Uh, now, if we, go, I, if we now go, I want to suggest if we want to run the country like a corporation. Yeah. Think of a corporation. <laughs> How many vice presidents do most corporations have? Four, mm-hmm. five, six, maybe. <laughs> I suggest we have. I suggest we have the president and two vice presidents, one domestic, one for foreign affairs, and then you could have an old person like Biden. Uh, you could have a middle-aged person like Elizabeth Warren. And then you can throw in a young person like Buttigieg or uh, whoever, whoever the other other young. Well, you know, are. you know, you, uh, Tim, you make a lot of sense. Wait a minute, you make a lot of sense from a corporate standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and quite frankly, uh, you know, I don't know why we don't, we shouldn't treat the United States like a corporation. After all, I mean, it's called the United States of America. That could be the name of a corporation. Of you think well, I, worked, I worked. I uh, worked. I, I was one of the two million employees for a long time. And it's too huge for anybody, and it's too huge for two people. Uh, uh, and I think you could, you well, know. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. Up, hold on, hold, more, hold on a second, Tim. Uh, isn't that the reason we have a cabinet? That the that the president yeah. it relies on these people who know better than he does to man these various right. posts to deal with those problems. And the only person that I, I know of that hasn't paid attention to them is Trump. He thinks yes. he knows it but, all. But, but the cabinet doesn't have to stay. They're employees. They're not, a co, they're not co-equal. So I really think it would make a difference having a vice president that has to stay the whole term and couldn't just, you know, you couldn't just leave for some reason. Well, um, I think there needs to be a commitment. You know, I mean, I, I, I see what you're saying, and, and it doesn't, it's not like it doesn't make some kind of sense, you know. But 
The way it doesn't make sense is you're never going to get anybody to go with you on this deal. You know, that's <laughs> they the problem. They want to do it with Electoral College. Do you think we could do that? Well, I I think it's going to be a rough go. I think long after I'm gone, you could make, it, you could make it irrelevant, though. He could make it irrelevant, but I think that if I were to come back here a hundred years from now, there'd still be an electoral college. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. But, now think, Wait a minute. think about twenty. Go ahead. Wait, Jeff had his hand up here. Yeah. So I've been brainstorming this idea myself a little bit, and I wonder if it's a good idea for Gabnet to start interviewing some of these people who want to become president. They, 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 you know what? What would happen, Alex? You, you know what? How the world is? Do you think we could get somebody to come up here and 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 listen to us ten people? Um, I probably get the Green Party candidate, and that's about the only person I could probably <laughs> get. You know, the rest of them figure I'm too small a fish to even have anything to do with. You know, uh, get Andrew Gillum to, uh, to commit and. <laughs> Before he announces, and then you got his commitments. You think Andrew Gill? You know, I saw him on the air the other day. He's not, but he, but what, what a, what a, what a good-looking guy to run for office. I mean, he's television ready. <laughs> you know. Um, you don't yeah, think Mueller's going to run? Uh, uh, Mueller, but, Mueller wants to get done with the uh, report. Nah, Mueller's not going to run. If, no, I, if I were Mueller, I would want to get rid of this, get finish this report off so, so I can get the fuck out of Dodge. Yeah, you that's know? right. <laughs> I mean, go to Europe and hide. He's, uh, he's, I'm sure, had enough with people, uh, you know, blasting him and saying things about him and so on that he just wants to get it all taken care of and go home well, wherever well, home Rose is. Rose has been, been in the seat longer and they won't let him leave. Well, he won't leave until the Mueller report is finished. So yeah, I think Barr. I think Barr is, is is. I think he's a slow ship moving back toward the Democrats because he wants Rosenstein there. I think it was an eye opener when Barr got to see everything. Yeah, but today you had Trump saying that Barr was a really honest guy, and he he knows that he will do yeah. what's right. And uh, that he wants the Mueller report to come out, and he wants the public to see it, but it's up to Barr. And it's like, <laughs> Barr's in his fucking pocket. He's already gotten a talking to. Yeah, yeah. He's gotten that, yeah, are you I loyal to me follow, speech? I think he's going to follow the rule of law, so. Well, uh, you know, um, who knows? You know, uh, if he tries to stick with the rule of law, then I guess he'll get fired by... Uh, but but, but he helped Donald pardon Trump. people when he was there before, so what's his name never got uh, invested Yeah, in. you know, I mean, uh, all that's a moot point. I think that right now we have, and, and this is where we started tonight, we have a president who this weekend came unhinged. Uh, yeah, how and, would you like to be at the, uh, uh, the uh, Kelly, uh, Kellyanne's uh, dinner tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, well uh, that, you know, be you know the deal behind but between Kellyanne and George Conway, don't you? <laughs> what is it? Uh, I'm sure they got a book deal just coming in the next month or so. <laughs> They're working on a book deal. That's what this is. Look, look at uh, the guy that worked with Clinton, uh, Mary Mat. It's not Mary Matlin, is it? Who is it? Oh, uh, James Carville and Mary Matlin. They they yeah. were a, a, yeah. a feisty couple, and they have had a great marriage. Yeah, hey, listen, yeah, yeah. There's, right. a, there's our theme rolling along here, uh, indicating that uh, I'm in a few moments here, I'm going to have to say goodbye to all of you. It's been a really nice night tonight. It just seems like something was missing that kind of enhanced this program. I don't know what it was, uh, <laughs> but it, once again, it's like I said before, I kind of feel like I went swimming in the lake naked. You know, and and uh, my balls were being cooled by the cool waters, and, and the I pee pee shrank, and everything. Yeah, and I could even pee in the in the in the water. Yeah. Hey, you got to do some. You got to do some commercials for some ED medicine now. That's right. Hey, listen. Uh, let's all say good night, uh, Charlie. Thank you so much, Josh. Been terrific. Uh, Vernon, always nice to have you here, Kevin. Good to see that you're alive and well. Uh, uh, Tom Yamaguchi, always love it when you're on. 
It's always a smart hey, night. Zealand when you're just here. banned all assault weapons. Oh, yeah. did they really? Let's get into that, by the way. They also, people were <laughs> independently turning their guns over. That yeah. was nice, too. Uh, uh, Tony, Ma uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Tony. And thank you, Tim, for your late call on our program. I think what would be nice if, be if all of you were to wave a big wave goodbye. There we go. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight, and a fine citizen panel it was. Well, for all the technical problems that I had when we started out tonight, we certainly finished off the program on a, on a fairly high note. And uh, technologically, I think we're okay, too. Uh, uh, listen, uh, you know who's next? Of course. Uh, it's uh, the uh, intersection with Jack Bishop tomorrow night, 9.30. Damian Chaplin promises me he'll be here with the exchange, and then I'll be back again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life at 10 o'clock. Eastern Time, uh, and as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.